Yeah, Recording is on. Okay, go ahead. So, hello, show the link. Uh, December twenty first, twenty twenty two. Excellent. World Cup finals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's like you know, I see, I, I, I look, I see a problem. I see a problem. And I always like how is his heuristics. Mm -hmm. So like, is this a coordination problem? Can it be decomposed into a series of coordination problems? So probably often yes. <laughs> probably. Yeah. Right. And you know, I, and a lot of those I ask if we had a commons, would we have this problem? If we had a commons, could we improve on this? For like a people in the commons, and again, I, I find at least in my in my imagination, very often the answer is yes. Uh, but in practice, we have the, the hierarchies, and I find it interesting because you know they are there, and they are so good at self-preserving mm -hmm. that we. I guess it's not surprising on evolutionary um, you know um, terms that they that we see them, because they are they have evolved to self-preserve and they are good at it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then we come and we are like, you know, to some extent, this emergent, like challenging force, uh, which tries to question them. Mm -hmm. But we sort of have history against us, no? Right. Uh, yeah. So, and then I'm like, I, am I hopeful because it's rational? Or am I hopeful because it's irrational to be hopeful? And I, I, but I just want it. Um, and, and I'm afraid that you and I are sort of irrationally hopeful on this front because history certainly doesn't prove our case very much. And, and unfortunately, one of the forces at play here is that communities that are sort of pacifist and egalitarian always can't defend themselves against communities that are militaristic and, right. uh, and hierarchical, like, like they get run over. <clears throat> right? Because in particular, if you're doing the work of, of a healthy community, you really don't have that much surplus to go building a huge army and, and you know, being aggressive or, yeah. or whatever else, or, or being defensive. Um, it's a bit of a problem. And you have a local, a, a local bias when you're like, hey, everybody here is great. We get along. Someone comes in, you have this agreement, you solve it. Oh, surely people can get along. Right. Which is the mode I operate and we operate uh, uh, in in uh, for a lot of time. Yep. But then you meet an actual fascist, <laughs> yep. and it just doesn't work. Right. Uh, a priori, so uh, and uh, a fascist as a standing for like corrupt the hierarchy and so on. Exactly. So so I just I had a conversation earlier today where I brought up you know how do you build trust? How do you? Um, it's possible sometimes to to melt people who seem uh, irredeemably fascistic or, yes. or other, otherwise, you know, whatever. And I told the story of Daryl Davis, who is a black jazz pianist who basically has a garage full of Ku Klux Klan robes because mm. 30, 35 years ago, he was playing in a, in a bar and a guy walked up to him who turns out to be a Ku Klux Klan Grand Dragon. Wow. Uh, senior, senior ranking, you know, senior member of the KKK. And and they get to know each other and, and, and over the course of two years invite each other to their each other's homes for dinner and the guy retires out of the kkk and hands daryl his robes and so daryl now has 200 robes in his garage because he respectfully and patiently listened to people who hated him and wanted him either dead or out of the country <clears throat> and and what daryl says right, is right. you know how can you hate me if you don't even know me which is brilliant <clears throat> mm -hmm. and and so i have a couple other Amazing. stories like this of hope that people who appear to be irredeemably full of hate on the other side, um, Daryl Davis or Davies? Hold on, I think it's Davis. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a link. Oh, there, there. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, Davis. And uh, <clears throat> so here he is in my brain. Um, and I will give you a link to Thank one you. of his talks that's really good. <clears throat> How can you hate me when you don't even know me? And then which is the best talk? I think this one. Um, yeah, watch this if you haven't watched it before. It's really good. And he's, a, he's just a lovely speaker. And I, I, I got to interview him one to one for, wow. for a podcast that was brewing but didn't really happen. And I still have to po I haven't published that, that interview yet, so I need to do that. Um, oh, okay. But he's that he's sounds... he's a lovely soul. Oh. He's just like super cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, and I really admire that. And I th I think there is definitely potential, you know, 
or like this outreach um, uh, across the border. I had a, I have a friend who actually we spoke about the commons once and like you know and he says something that really stuck with me, uh, and he said that because we were talking about the because you have the imagine you have the commons standing in for like a place where people manage to get along mm -hmm. with some rules constructed you know, and the outside and you want essentially you are to some extent or you can call it the aura or you know or like the uh, uh global brain global mind and uh, but some space and presumably you know you you want to defend that place you want to defend that place from outright attacks, you know, mm -hmm. like to, to prevent, you know, uh, the uh, suffering, uh, the balance of tolerance and what you mentioned about like uh, uh, how you will trust and like protect. And, and he said that he saw, and he, he just came right out with this, and I, I really liked it, that you need two kinds of roles in the border. Um, and since then, I've been thinking about the, this as a membrane, you know, the, the selective membrane of the system. Right. And he's seen that the, the two kinds of roles were bouncers, which you can imagine, and Buddhas. Right. Hmm. And we share, like, you know, an interest for Buddhism uh, with my friend. And I really like that because I think that, you know, to some extent, Daryl Davis, I mean, in this in this story, I mean, when I know him, he made me think of the Buddha role, which is like person who actually, or, or, you know, of course, like in Christianism, you can, you can come up with uh, similar stereotypes, you know, like, uh, and also in philosophy in general, but, you know, uh, this person who goes beyond <laughs> in more than one way and like embraces, you know. Yeah. Uh, who said this? Yeah. Where, where does this come from? From this friend I have. Um, uh, he's, uh, I'll, I'll send you his link. He's really good. He's smart. Uh, yeah. 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 And like, uh, he's from what are Nazis? Yeah. Uh, what are Nazis, Nazis being? Oh, this here, um, hmm. and uh, he's a uh, radio. He's on Twitter. Hmm. Uh, it. And uh, yeah, um, and of uh, one of the things that I, I, I thought at some point is like, well, this is like a, these are both very important roles, and you know, this go back to well, uh, well, to the problem of moderation in, in the favors, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. Like, but these are like this can be really tiring. Uh, unless you're an actual an actual uh, Buddha, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Uh, it, you can play that role in this sense of the bouncer role, but this is work, right? Uh, you're part of the to some extent you become part of the immune system, you could say, mm -hmm. of, um, uh, of the system. Um, if we which also like I, I wanted to ask you, I don't know if you if you know. Um, um, I made this. I did this course. Uh, you know the, the so essentially autopoiesis. Mm -hmm. The yeah. So I guess this uh, this term as you know as you related uh, to, to this thing we are discussing also for hierarchy, right? Mm -hmm. Because I, I the couldn't hierarchy... I couldn't explain autopoiesis to you, but I've heard of it and it's in my brain. So right. Yes. So mm -hmm. and I I haven't read the original book. Right. Uh, where because this is come from uh, this Maturana and Barena. Barena and Maturana, exactly. Uh, right, right. Um, but uh, I saw um, all this um, in this uh, workshop I did um, that introduced a lot of the um, of this concept to me, and it com this comes from um, system theory. Uh, but it's, uh, no, so it's from the Capra course, you know, Frithof Capra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did that <laughs> uh, for a quarter. Yeah, and he introduced me at the recent condition that I've seen of the living. Yes, uh, precisely. Um, Capra does courses I, on the, know, the theory of living systems. Exactly. Yes, uh, and he also has this uh, hybrid, you know, uh, cybernetics uh, system thinking. On the one side, and like you know, uh, philosophy, uh, Eastern philosophy in particular, sometimes. Yep. Uh, backgrounds. Yep. And physics. And hey, physics. Hey. hey. Um, so then I, I think 
if perhaps you know if it's if it could be in, in a way proactive to think of all the commons and hierarchies as living systems right. you know who are they have this autopoietic uh, you know like this membrane like and and self-preserving uh, like uh, processes and how could we communicate uh, at that level you know could the commons reach out to the hierarchies in in, in the same way as uh daryl davis mm -hmm. have you heard the term nested containment uh, mm, I think so. I heard it for the first time yesterday on a call with a new interesting, interesting friend. Um, mm -hmm. And he was saying that what a lot of software needs is nested containment. And, and my closest understanding of it from the conversation yesterday was that all the different sort of working parts that compose our bodies have nested containment in the sense of mm -hmm. atoms don't know how they make up molecules, but molecules hold a bunch of atoms in some way that works. And then molecules right. organize together <clears throat> into cells, into organisms. None, and none of the component parts really understands their, their role in the large, but the, but, but the large forms sort of this nested containment uh, and, and the nesting stacks in a way that leads to us sitting here talking over, you know, over video. Right. Um, and software, he says, is mostly missing that phenomenon. It's not composable mm -hmm. through nested containers. And I, I'm talking out of my ass now about what he was trying to say, because I'm not sure I fully understood it, but it, but it fits what we're talking about here in terms of right, right. platforms and, and, you know, how this all fits. Right, right. Makes sense. So I, I, I want to, I, I don't, I'm not um, familiar with the term in software, Ms. Containment. It makes me think of transclusion, mm -hmm. but uh, I'm, I'm to some extent, I mean, when you transclude, yeah, the system that is being transcluded, well, I mean, it can know it's being transcluded. transcluded. So, you know, like, uh, in, uh, depending on the protocol, uh, you know, in the, uh, you know, uh, with iframes, for example, in the web, like some some uh, websites will refuse to be embedded, mm -hmm. and so on. So they, they have this facility. So I wonder if it's. I wonder if that says that it's not nested containment. Uh, but I need to. And I, I will look into this. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And I can ask him more about what he thinks. We're going to talk again, <clears throat> and and see what's up. Nice. Um, so how are you, Benley? Yeah, how you doing, Billy? I'm doing okay. And for some reason, I've been tired for the last couple of days, so I'm not very effective. Been playing around with the, I don't know, Flancian. If you've seen the sense doing stuff that's happening on OGM, so. No, I'm be very behind. Unfortunately. I've been trying to facilitate that, but. Uh, thank you for uh, thank you for what you did. Humans are worse me. than cats, so they, they are. <laughs> Cats can only scratch you and bite you. Right, yeah. I don't really like humans, but they're the best thing around. <laughs> um, I mean, they are pretty impressive. They can yeah. be. Yeah. No, it's it's good. Um, but yeah, I've been, been struggling with finding my words and speaking clearly. So see how that goes. So you're working on sense making and cat hurling? Sure. Well, yeah, I'm trying to do sense making, but that includes other humans and right. Uh, well, it doesn't have to, but it's it's much better. There in is theory. there is single player sense making, and that, unfortunately, that's where most of the tools are are focused. Yeah, and yeah. What we're, what we're trying to do is multiplayer sense making. That's where we're yeah. that's where we're aiming, and it is hard as hell. And it's exponentially harder, but it has exponential benefits. Hopefully, yes, yes, we hope. Right? We think anyway. Hypothesis. I subscribe to that one. Yeah. But yeah. So part of the reason there's a fellowship of the link is that I was having conversations with people who were like optimistic about the commons and about open sharing of links and about working openly and openness in general. And I was like, that sounds like a thing we should perfect, defend, and explore, and figure out like where this takes us. You know. Yeah. And and most of us were working on tools for thinking or something like that. So that's kind of kind of the commonality. But I think. Philosophically, we have a larger umbrella of commonality uh, around the things I just said. On that, uh, I was looking at the uh, Flansin. You made a fellowship of the link Agora. 
Oh yeah. Uh, it's is not that... Ray. Yeah. Good, because it wasn't working. <laughs> no, it's actually. Oh, it's actually, actually down. the Agora went went down. I, I looked for it the other day, and it was not working. Yeah, the Ferrocio Link one. Yeah. Yes, you can. Uh, apology for that, but I'm I'm That's actually fine. changing the containers. And our work should always be up, but it's not. So tools for thinking on agro, agro.org slash tools for thinking is up. That's working right now. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but the other one, yeah, I need to I need to keep <clears throat> iterating it essentially. Uh, if this actually goes, brings me back to the community sense, sense uh, making, if you would like me to, I mean, um, yeah, and this, this is an open offer, but you have like either streams or gardens. So essentially, uh, any re I, I say streams and gardens, uh, but usually I just mean like repositories, mm -hmm. and a stream will be like timeline driven to some extent, and uh, digital garden will be like entity driven to put it some way, no? Um, but you know they can mesh uh, and mix. But if you have any of those that you would like to integrate, I will integrate it into this, and also it will motivate me to actually uh, get it running uh, <laughs> again and like uh, in a stable way. Um, cool. And we had also talked about maybe importing some hunk of my brain data into Agora. <clears throat> yes. To see yeah. and I can definitely go with it how there. it works and how it fits. Um, and, and Bentley, so um, to catch you up, Lancian, on the OGM list a little bit, we, <clears throat> through a couple different stimuli, we were like, we're trying to do sense making here, but why don't we just do some sense doing? Why don't we sort of pick some software and do an exercise yes. that will let us see some results? Okay, good. <clears throat> and then the thing that bubbled up as the possible software was Marc-Antoine Parent's uh, idea loom, which is sort of finished and sort of useful, but it would take a lot of work for him to sort of coach people through using, et cetera, et cetera. And what I didn't, I didn't realize until a call two days ago <clears throat> was that it's tuned to look at email archives and threaded email discussions because it picks those up and then manipulates mm -hmm. <clears throat> what was said, the assertions made on email threads. Um, so that's kind of where we were heading. And then we ended up on a call about sense doing where we really got distracted. We, 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 we bumped right back up to the level of how do we build trust? Why is this a low trust community? And then two non-standard, non-left-leaning members of the community both sort of quit the community um, after sort of trying to stay in there and talk with us and all this. And they were like, nope, we're gone. And I'm like, God damn it. <clears throat> so... So we're trying to sort out what to do in the middle of that, mm -hmm. and then, and then, interesting, and then, uh, so and then Bentley took one of the posts from Pete. Uh, no, sorry, uh, I'm forgetting which post you took, it, but I've got it open in a tab, and put them into a Google Doc so we don't have a place to have <clears throat> the conversation because the, the question did come up about like where do we put these docs? How do we make this work? Sorry, I'll stop now. So, so I guess I'm just interested about like that system, or like that uh, you know these people leaving. Did they leave because of the of some meta level disagreement on like you know what sense making means, or did they leave because of some specific exercise you tried uh, uh, running on a specific topic? So I think they left because the dialogue was too un too hostile to them or something. Um, they were not feeling like there was progress made. They were feeling crappy about being in there, and they got into a couple of different verbal tussles <clears throat> with participants on the mailing list. Um, that mm. feels like what happened. Bentley, you may have a different opinion or description of it. Yeah, I think overall the the friction they were feeling, I think, made the communication not worth their time. Um, and I think that was mostly the community on the mailing list. Um, yeah, and that does seem to be a symptom of our, the society thing right now where your, yeah, it's, it's almost, I, it's probably oversimplified simplified to say signaling and stuff, but it's, it's where I, a lot of people don't seem to think it's worth their time and maybe it isn't to actually listen to someone that is that far out of your tribe mm -hmm. um, which was the whole point that that the two people that left were trying to get us to do so when they pushed and they got the push back they're like i tried 
I know. And it, felt like, it, felt, it felt like things were just getting interesting. Like we were just getting to a place where we could actually maybe make a breakthrough or three uh, in there. Yeah. <clears throat> and yeah. So I was very bummed when they left. And I don't know how, yeah, I don't have any ideas on, on how to fix that, but it was, yeah, it was, it was both a, a specific topic and the, the meta issue of I I'm saying things and I'm just getting a surface level response, not someone looking deep into what I'm saying and helping me craft it right. to be a way that we both make sense out of. And so that that's what triggered us kind of doing the sense doing thing. But that's mm -hmm. also kind of a, a, a different area. It just triggered it again. It actually isn't a solution to that problem that those two people brought up. Well, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit tangentially, but. Yep. So so if I'm. So I guess uh, I, I here I have two questions. I guess <laughs> uh, one is like uh, the second, uh, perhaps is <laughs> I start with the second one, uh, which is like how can I help uh, uh, with sense making and sense doing, in particular given that I'm completely behind. So I don't know if you if I, I should just the first thing is catch up, and then see and become part of the community, or if there's any way I could help. And so that's the second question. Uh, so right now it's it's very much in the nascent idea, and mm -hmm. I think it's suffering from no one wanting to uh, enforce their vision on anyone else. Um, mm -hmm. So there's kind of a, a lot of people saying, "Oh, what do we want to do?" <laughs> um, uh, so I've been playing with the amount of kind of like laying things out that I want to do, um, and still feel inviting, you know, inviting people that have different ideas mm -hmm. uh so there's nothing there's nothing there there yet um mm -hmm. so i don't even know if it's really worth catching up uh uh if you have a concept of what in the sense doing sense making i mean it's sense making sense doing is a, a a term we we coined up to differentiate from general sense making saying we're going to practice sense making on a topic and then step back and look at the meta of that and say, mm -hmm. how can we improve sense making going forward? So it's like a small iteration right, loop right. is the way I'm describing it. Nice. And Jerry, definitely correct me if if you think I'm uh, it, that you had a different impression of what we came up with a year ago when we first came up with sense doing. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So there's not there's not a there's not a lot of work happening right now. It's just a whole bunch of people where the, the term sounds interesting, but they don't know what it is, and then no one's kind of set clear vision. Yeah. Right. Well, um, a couple things to add because I don't disagree with anything you said, Bentley. Um, one is we're going to have another sense doing call to sort this thing out. It's just that we're right up right up against Christmas and New Year's, so I think that the, the that's going to make it a little bit challenging to just pick everybody's time. <clears throat> but the conversation is on is is sort of in motion, and Bentley has put in some effort, uh, and a couple others have put in some effort to to say, okay, here's the artifact. Um, I tried to step in and say, hey, here's how I see it, and let's do this, and really nobody picked up and and, and went and did it. So I so and and then in in doing so, I also kind of made a mistake because. Um, I was trying to outline what our options path, what our options are, what the paths look like with pros and cons. And one path is the idea loom on some of the historic threads from our mailing list. Um, the other then, but I was suggesting let's take this conversation over to Mattermost to a channel on Mattermost so we can talk about it in the sense doing channel. That that way we don't flood the list and we get it over there. Problem with that is that I didn't realize until two days ago that Marc Antoine's idea loom is tuned to mailing lists. And the moment we take the conversation off a mailing list, his tool becomes less useful. Then the second problem is I'm not that eager. I'm, I'm, I'm on both sides of this. I would love to go dissect and analyze a historic conversation we had where there's some thorny issues, but that turns a lot into he said, she said. I'm really interested in a green field exercise where we're like, what would a healthy organization or, or society do around some of these issues um, and that realistically tries to address inclusivity questions and the other sorts of things, not just the science and logic of it. And so those, that was the path, those are the different paths I was trying to outline. And I don't know that we resolved any of that or, or figured it out. And I think we got to a place where we could do maybe both at the same time, both concurrently, where <clears throat> we, could, we could start an effort to do uh, an analysis of just a couple messages in, in, you know, in some contained domain um, and at the same time, a couple people could go say, hey, here's a couple clean wiki pages. Let's describe 
what a what a rational plan would look like, that trustworthy, um, efficient way of going through the next pandemic, for example. And, and mm-hmm. I have an interest in this sense doing, leaving some kind of artifacts behind that are useful for future conversations and other, other communities. I would love us to create something that's actually handy. Right, right. Makes sense. That sounds very interesting. Thank you. Uh, the, the other question I had was whether, you know, thinking about how, uh, the, the loss of these members who, who were perhaps very interesting to the problem, and of course, like interesting people, just because, but also an interesting problem because they, they were different in this sense. Whether, um, there, this, whether you think you, um, there could be some opportunity there because, you know, like when you said that, I was like, oh, they were like only two and all the rest were like, you know, uh, of a different position. That, we, we don't, that's have, like that, we don't have that right? many people coming in with their point of view. Right, exactly. So the question is, could, could perhaps, and this is just like a brainstorming yeah. thing, could, could this be an opportunity to, to perhaps reach out to these people and say like, hey, we noticed that it didn't work. Do you know of other people who think like these things and are willing to engage in dialogue in such and such terms. So perhaps you could have that group and we can have this group and then the groups get together. Mm-hmm. So to some extent, because, you know, uh, that could diffuse some of the personal level, maybe, uh, the, you know, dynamics that affected, I, I wasn't there, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but like, so I, I, I usually say Aguera for short. So I, I thought of like, you know, what will an Aguera fork look like? When like an hour, I just divide into communities which don't want to be together anymore. Mm-hmm. And what will an hour merge look like? But you know, like thinking of the fork, you know, uh, uh, you can imagine like an hour, uh, the, the typical uh, 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 scenario I have in my mind, which I don't know if it will happen, is like an anarchist hour, like the first one, which divides into anarcho socialist and anarcho capitalist. Yeah. That would yeah. be unsurprising, relatively speaking. Uh, and, and which conversation the hour could have, right? Right. So I, I don't know if there's this is a framing that could be useful for uh, sense making or sense doing, but perhaps you know ideally I would expect that uh, you know it won't be like travel war, which is like what we have had for like so many thousands of years, mm-hmm. <laughs> but rather something like dialogue, right? Yeah. Uh, on a group level, which is very it's it, it's actually hard to find many instances of that. There's a bunch of projects and groups that have done online dialogue in different ways. We're connected to a bunch of people who are really experienced in it. I can point to a bunch of them, but we're not really using any of those tools and we're not availing Mm -hmm. ourselves of what the possibilities are. And doing so would be a, I think a big lift, like, like getting, getting many of us into some platform where we could do this and then analyzing it and dealing with it properly. That's, that's a, um, it's a hefty, hefty investment of of a bunch of people's time and effort. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I, I, I guess it, it could also be done only. I guess on the because you, you mentioned the, this uh, green, uh, the green field, you know, or mm-hmm. like uh, interest. I guess I, I guess it could be interesting to think. Okay, there were such, two such groups, you know, like a sense doing, like a left leaning sense doing uh, group, and a right leaning sense. That would be really interesting. To, like go with the money. I don't know. Right. I don't know. What would, who... I don't know whose community that is that is the right leaning. I, I know individuals, but I don't know a group to invite into that conversation. Right. So so then I guess my uh, one heuristic will be ask the individuals. Yeah. Which yes. group is most representative, you know? Yep. Because like if we could find that group, <laughs> that would seem so interesting. Yep. Um, I don't know. The only thing I can think of is if we could reach out to someone like braver angels and say, send us your conservatives yeah. <laughs> into this community. Uh, Cause they have both in that community. I don't know if you're, I think you're both familiar with that, but yeah. um, no. what was he now? Bra- so braver, it's angels. braver angels. So they're uh, an American from the USA group of bringing conservatives and liberals together in open discussions. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, and the, where that, differs from what i'm thinking since doing is uh is is that 
you know, they're actually doing it with a design format, but since doing is experimenting with different formats. So like y'all were just saying a minute ago where we might want to use the tools and the practices of people out there. I, I envision the since doing project is an experiment to quickly iterate on those tools and experiment and either improve them or use them as um, examples of those practices working. Mm -hmm. So um, someone had asked why, you know, I'm saying small tasks. And well, that's why I think I'd like to iterate. Um, and the goal isn't actually to solve these problems, but to, but not also to be in the theory of solving problems, but to actually reiterate on quick practices. So. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So yeah, so Flancy and also to answer an earlier question, I think the best way to get involved going forward would be as if Jerry and I made sure that you had the link to the next meeting. Yeah. And there's not been enough uh, building. Uh, you might also look at this document, um, which uh, where we're kind of hashing. I guess I have three participants hashing around in here. <laughs> For some reason, I showed up as anonymous on one of my things. Hmm. That's odd. Yeah. Cool. I mean, nice. I I, I mean, I I I, the, I just skimmed this. This looks very interesting. Thank you. Um, for some reason, it took me back. Uh, I guess we, uh, we touched on this surely earlier. Uh, I'm in at least two similar, uh, like similarly thin discussions, but related to moderation in the favors. And like, you know, uh, uh, communities writing a code of conduct mm -hmm. for themselves. Uh, to some extent that there's already some instances which are more like introspective or, you know, self-defined and some which are more like hierarchical or like, you know, run by a, a moderator or a single person, etc. And, and it, I guess just calling that out that there's there maybe some opportunities to also like collaborate there or at least look at how you know communities that scale work there um and of course it's also very much with the side guys because well it seems like we are in a in a, in a moment with in a moment in a moment where like the favors is rolling and it's also looking at itself uh in an interesting way yeah it'd be interesting to see how in the moderation aspect you can use tools like if there is a disagreement say oh let's all use this pattern go on a meeting and do that or our standard processes when there's a community disagreement yes. let's host this thing or use this tool to settle it so that, yeah that'd be interesting exactly i mean we are essentially trying to do that exactly that develop that which we don't have the, neither the tools or the process is uh, in social co-op the instance i'm, I'm part of and uh, and this comes because there's a you know moderation I'm a part of the moderation team and uh the junior member and like uh there's a wide range of you know like there's a wide range of ways in which pe people can disagree <laughs> and like uh very often it's not clear to a moderator you know and we are dealing also with this, this information and uh, you know a wide range from like outright abuse and nazis to like you know People who are just like anti-establishment and perhaps spreading some anti-vax memes, for example, different parts of the spectrum, clearly. You know? uh, but there's like very little developed, and the tooling that Maston uh, uh, gives, which is what uh, most people do uh, use, is very limited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The whole thing about how do you allow the dissenting view? without allowing harm to come to a community um, and also handling the problem we had in OGM where people were not gracious to the dissenting view and should you be and all that stuff. That is, mm -hmm. <laughs> that is even deeper. My, my hope is that is in creating tools that help us to <clears throat> collectively get a better sense of what reality is. Mm -hmm. um, then, if we're if we're chained in the discussion from a free speech, I get to say what I want to a let's as a group explore um, 
making a map of of what we of what we think reality is together then you know the yes you can you can withstand people saying inaccurate things um if you have that base of knowledge which of course is what jerry's all about is about the um creating this this hub of knowledge that uh, share knowledge so yeah yeah that, that's interesting right because if you are like just building a map which includes what you think and also like attribution and things like it's a fact of knowledge it's a bit of knowledge that person x thinks y mm -hmm. that seems to like perhaps equal the few things right it's like it can because even the person is saying something you disagree with your reaction may be less likely to be that's wrong to well now i know you think that <laughs> so i'm gonna add it to the map right Right. And, and yeah. so one of the places we got to that was nice was uh, the, the question, tell me more, is a very good question in those situations. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, I hadn't heard that before. That's interesting. Tell me more. <clears throat> right. And then it lets them, it lets the other person unpack what they believe and why. And I've been right. sitting here as you're talking, I was sitting here spinning on how do we, why haven't we over all the time we've spent in OGM gotten to the place where we can slow down conversations and actually step down through the logics of something any assertion any claim <clears throat> and the, the one that the, the one that's topmost for me is um, on the ogm mailing list grace uh who was the first of these two folks to step off the list um, grace basically said well jerry when you caught covid didn't that shatter your world and i think what she meant was <clears throat> how could you possibly have caught covid you were fully vaccinated and I failed to reply to her on the mailing list, but on the Thursday call, <clears throat> last, I think it was just last Thursday's call, she was on the call and I, I, I basically said, no, actually she wasn't on that call, but I answered her question for the group because I brought it up this way. And I said, I had no, there was no thought in my head that I was immune, that there was some magic shield where I was immune to catching COVID. Being vaccinated merely meant to me that because of the method of operation of viri and vaccines, meant that my likelihood of getting very sick or dying was much lower than your average person of my age or whatever else. That's all it meant to me. And so, and so she seemed to have an idea that I had an idea. She had a preconception that I thought I was immune, which my, my world didn't shatter at all. My world was like, ah, shit, I, you know, I, I caught the COVID roulette by not being cautious enough and going to a restaurant in Barcelona, which is probably where I caught it. <clears throat> um, so anyway, that set of assumptions and beliefs feels to me like a little window into a conversation, into a set of, of conflicting belief systems, which I like. Um, and it might be I'm misunderstanding her position on it. I don't know. And I, I don't know if we can bring her back yeah. into that conversation. And it would have been fascinating to explore how she came to that yes. impression. That's what I want to know. Right. I still want to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the only logic I, the only logic I can have for it is that she misunderstands what a vaccine is and how vaccination works and how the MRNA research works and all of that, which I tried to explain in an email back. Um, I, yeah. I, my, my thought is that maybe she has, and it's inappropriate, I guess, to be talking about someone, but I find that people sometimes have that impression because they are generalizing a group and they feel like that's what the group thinks. And I do think that sometimes they think that the group thinks that because people in their group thinks that the other group thinks that, but they've never actually like had a deep conversation with the other side to say. And some of that is deliberate misinformation by people in the community and some of that is just straw manning the other side and some of that is just a yeah. broad misunderstanding of what the other side seems to think so it, it could be interesting like i keep going back to this like thing of like uh two sense doing groups conversing or like two hours talking and it, who, how, how would that go no like one group saying like you think x to the other group and then the other group having many answers potentially one say one being like you know no we no we don't and the other being yes we do because the same group will that will expose the heterogeneity right uh, yeah. so essentially like conversations could fork uh like start at the you know you make an assertion out of the group and then you can break it down to like you know the responses from the individuals yeah. uh, that seems like it could be interesting so the problem with picking something like 
immunity, like the little, like the little window I just, I just pointed to and described, <clears throat> is that it, you wind up down an alley of I'm wrong, you're right, and whatever else, and people may not want to participate because of that, or I don't know. Um, and I'm trying to figure out, is there an example of something that would be more like <clears throat> the uh, more in common videos that Heineken and others shot back in the day, where they have rectangles where people of different tribes that who look similar stand in a room, and then the, the facilitator basically starts asking questions and says, if you have ever, <clears throat> if you have ever misskipped meals because you couldn't, you, you or your family couldn't afford them, please step forward to the wall. And out of every one of the rectangles of, of cliques that look alike, a bunch of people step forward and go to the wall. They have, they have all felt that. If you were ever teased very harshly or beaten up in school, please step to the wall. And, and everybody sees, oh my God, those people look really different, but we share all these experiences. It's a very, very nice um, set of exercises that doesn't lay blame and in fact shows you, you everybody's shared experiences and our, our, indeed our shared humanity. So I, I love that about that exercise, that there's no, <clears throat> that it doesn't lead toward, I'm, I'm right, you're wrong, <clears throat> look, the science proves me right or anything like that, which, which is the problem with some of the things that we're looking at doing is that they wind up sort of down that rabbit hole, which is a a fine and dandy set of logics to go through. And I think a bunch of us, you know, GM love that kind of thing uh, because we're logically oriented and we're looking at the situation going, how do we science the shit out of this? Right. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I, I haven't done, so I, I, I guess I, I haven't done this exercise except, you know, like on social media, you know, talking to, I talk to Nazis and show me, you know, then they I go through phases, you know, like we all, I guess, it was on point and like the, uh, and people, uh, Nazis and just very conservative and you know, the spectrum. And like I found that uh, I found that very, very interesting. I, I guess it, it, while doing that, I, I did uh, often miss uh, like just like an easy way to, to like uh, attribute, for example, or to say like, you know, this comes from like, uh, like this preconception I have, which I, you know, like perhaps, I, and that, that was perhaps the most useful, uh, one of the most useful things from the exercise, which is like, you know, for example, like, why do we believe in science? You know, why do we believe in, like, you know, like doctors mostly tell the truth uh, most of the time and so on, no? And then to some extent that that is statistical as well, and we, we don't know, I mean, we don't know that, right? It's like, it's part of our worldview. And perhaps admitting that as well, like, uh, you know, being open with all the assumptions we have, and like uh, it, it could actually uh, help in communicating with these groups and like surfacing the differences. So perhaps we could here we could uh, just rely on Google like they will advocate. So I'm I'm uh, wishing but, uh, to find I would love to find a group process that does what you just said, and I'm mm -hmm. wondering whether Nancy White would know of which subset or people are doing something like that because it would be it would be very nice to give us a place and a space and some time within which we could. Ex explain what we believe but in order to unpack what any individual believes that individual's got to feel some degree of safety and part right. of the problem the reason these two people walked away from ogm was they didn't feel safe i, I think right. I, might, I might be like over generalizing but that they said that in several different ways and mm -hmm. they also and maybe also they were frustrated because they felt like their efforts were fruitless with us because we were irreconcilably neither open nor global nor nor open-minded so, you know, right. Daniel's good critique of us was, I'm not so sure you're living up to your name at all. Oh, interesting. Mm. Well, so I, I would love to, I mean, okay, so that sounds uh, stressful and, you know, like disappointing, I understand, but it's also interesting. Yeah, <laughs> um, absolutely. I, I, I guess like, you know, I, I also think of this, uh, I, there may be a name for this, you know, when you have like a conversation or debate or, you know, with someone on social media, and they are like, for example, like way more popular than you. Yeah, yeah. And then you have this effect. I don't know if you mentioned so sometime where like you know you have this back and forth, and it's sort of like reasonable, like back and forth. But they get like you know all the support and all the likes and all the yeah, and you get none. It's like zero, and it feels really yeah, it's not good. Weird. I mean, we are uh, you know we have evolved to like feel safer when we are around friends, <laughs> and when the other person is getting like oh yes you dunked, it doesn't feel right. Uh, even if you are uh, doing it uh, willingly. So uh, I wonder if like in a group, it has to do with dynamics and you, know, you have two people with like a minority opinion and like a majority, 
even just saying like, I think you're wrong, even if you say that, if 10 people say it or 15, I don't know if it was, I guess the question is, was it a matter of volume as well? Of like everybody just like piling on or? Um, I don't know. In the interactions we're talking about, there were a few people that said spiky things. Um, mm. So at one point, um, Grace said something and then Gil replied, so what, you know, what's your evidence? Show me your evidence. And then Grace came back and said, hey, you're holding me to a whole different standard of proof than anybody else in this community. Because when anybody says something that everybody agrees with, there's no show me the proof. <clears throat> but here oh. I am showing up saying something different. And you're like, show me the studies. So that happened. Mm. And then Brad DeGraff, who doesn't pipe up very often in the group, but is in the group and is a really interesting person, he was like, fuck these people who don't believe in what's going on with science and whatever else. I can't waste my time on them. And that was the harshest note I remember seeing <clears throat> in those interactions, in those exchanges. And I'm, right, I'm right. making it sound harsher than I think his note really was. He, no, didn't, yeah. he didn't say fuck, but, <clears throat> but basically he said, I've given up. I, you know, I, I'm not engaging with those people. They're, they're a total loss and we just need to sort out how to fix this. Um, and Bentley, I may be projecting too much onto what he said, but that, that's kind of what I, what I held. I, I, I think that that's accurate is the sense and, and that is also lumping these two people in with the worst of yes. the other side, yes. uh, unconsciously it, yes. it wasn't intentional, but, and it, he was expressing his frustration because he'd worked, I'm sure he'd been in interactions with those people where he found yep. it fruitless. But it was an inaccurate assumption to think that the, these two people would have been fruitless. And, and I think they definitely wouldn't have been. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but I could definitely understand that emotional state because I've been in that situation. So, ironically, uh, here is the title of a, of a paper that he wrote in 2007. He's a co-author with a bunch of people, uh, but this idea of smartocracy and <clears throat> like he's been down this path for a really long time. Interesting. It's easy to get burned out doing this business of, <laughs> of oh, really? trying to, yeah. I mean, it happens to me every couple of months, right? So yeah. I just back off and. And I'm trying to figure out how do we, how do we map a little path that is happy making for both, for many different kinds of people, participants, where it feels like there's progress where we can sort of get not feel like we're wasting our time or, or getting defeated or breaking down so, so well, can i do one quick thought before Please. i answer that on a non sequitur is that I, I think i've also noticed that a lot of people in this community are are both not good at communicating and work very hard at communicating and they're interested in it because it's like every psychologist has a psychological problem. That's why they're in psychology. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like we attract people who have trouble communicating because they're curious and interested in it. The people that are naturally good at it don't need to talk about it. So it's an interesting thing. I mean, not always. I, I'm, 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 mixed on that. I'm think, very I, much generalizing. But I think we have both. I think we have a few extremely we, we good communicators. Yeah. And then we have a few people who are like, oh man, just not communicating so well. And, right. and, and yeah. And then, and part of it's me projecting. I, I have used, I, I'm bad at communicating <laughs> or let's say I've so, been but... fighting against my natural tendencies that I learned in high school. Right. Ah, so mm -hmm. I would win arguments by arguing people down and using words they didn't understand. Uh, well, when they would give up and that, that was a win. Right. Um, so I have to fight that tendency and every once in a while you'll see it come out and I'll scratch somebody <laughs> and I have to go back to my corner. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, so, I, and I feel like there's other people like me who find this all interesting because it's, it's not natural. And I think that's also great because a lot of times the people who do it naturally can't explain it or teach it or understand right. it. So it's, it, but we do have, we, we do have a mix, but it may, there may be a little bit sharper people in some places because um, it doesn't come naturally to some of us. Anyways, back to you, what you are asking, Jerry, I completely sidetracked. Um, but now I forgot it. Me too. I have to find my way back to it. Um, Flancy, did you, did you want to jump in? Um, so I guess, <clears throat> sorry, I, uh, I, I jumped to solutions in a, in a, in a, in a uh, sometimes not very useful way, but perhaps figuring hopefully uh, as a brainstorming exercise uh, to move forward. But I, I guess I, I keep thinking, I guess of these dynamics between like these two groups, 
asymmetric and so on in this case. And I wonder, uh, and this, uh, these two failure models you described, these two people who disengage or like, you know, uh, and they are resulting in these people leaving. So first, I guess I have a thought, which is like, I think it's sensible to, for someone to say, I, I would rather be in a group which has this degree of homogeneity when it comes to like basic uh, for us anyway, uh, like uh, mm, like tenants, because that is the baseline we need to uh, to allow for some uh, further like development uh, of some ideas. I think that's it's fine to want to have that space. Uh, so it, it seems like a sensible, but of course, like saying that is very exclusionary as well. If there is no alternative space, so I guess in that direction. Um, I wonder if uh, the, the the space we develop must have this, and I go back to this idea of like the commons or whatever as a living being with a membrane, right, and a core, uh, and organelles or core, uh, however you want to take the the metaphor. Uh, and whether you know some people are drawn to the membrane, and then you can say, you know, well, if, if you don't want to to talk to people who are uh, you know don't believe in science, maybe just keep around from the membrane, keep away from the membrane, and you'll probably be fine. Mm -hmm. And then and and the group depending on the size and the strain on the membrane and so on could still work, assuming you have like people on call, for example, or people who just are not really drawn to that kind of conversation. So to some extent, I think of roles. Uh, and I, I sometimes go back to the RPG metaphors, you know, or like or, uh, or, or what we were saying, like the wood and the bouncer. And I wonder if, to some extent, turn taking uh, on a group level may be something that could help here, you know, because uh, again, like if someone says something like, oh, uh, this is what I believe and I'm an anti vaxxer, perhaps uh, the group itself who is drawn to like just say like five responses, they could say, like, no, let's choose, you know, like a champion in the Troy War. Mm -hmm. Let's choose uh, Achilles. Become... Let's send Achilles forward. Yeah, yes, but yeah. without but the body. What about his heel? Isn't the heel a problem? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just remember the heel. He'll be fine. But, you know, He's like... a great warrior. Look, he wipes everybody out. <laughs> or maybe, perhaps more in the field of the Olympic Games, or like you know the canonical day lab, or but just you know say like okay, let's choose that response. Right? Who wants to draft a response? You know, like some turn taking, more like a you know like a correspondence game. Right. Uh, where people will, will band together and say, what is the best response we can master? And uh, to some extent, apply self-editing and self-improvement uh, yeah. before they, they cross that, they go to the membrane and face uh, the potential, you know, conflict, uh, you know, aspect. And this is, this is sort of, these are, what you're describing are elements of a group process or a facilitation technique or a platform, I don't know which, that I would love to bring us into <clears throat> to explore, like like exactly what you're saying. And and maybe what that means is we break up into groups of four, <clears throat> each of which comes up with some thesis and a way to present it. And then they come back into the plenary and say, here, here's what we believe in, in the framework we've agreed to use to present issues. Here's what we believe about this issue. <clears throat> and then and then lather, rinse, repeat or something. Um, that's that's very interesting to me. Time consuming, but interesting. Time consuming, um, I guess. It is. It has the same shape, same shape as, a, as a game to yeah. some extent, like turn turn taking and like role taking, and and that seems to point up some potential. It uh, also, depends on whether it can be fun. It also occurs to me that we might be a community in need of some coaches or some other kind of guidance mm -hmm. <clears throat> to to sort of level everybody up in the different ways in which each of us needs to level up. And that that's right. a piece of what's happening is we don't have that wisdom sort of in the group or we're yes. not making that effort to do that. So we're winding up kind of slithering back into all the ways in which each of us um, wants, needs yes, to go, yes. but, but that don't serve the whole necessarily all that well. I don't know. Completely. Yeah. And I, I have a, so in, in reason score, I have one format where it's a team versus team, uh, so that's kind of very similar. I actually have two researchers mm -hmm. and kind of one Barker who's saying things. But yeah, I also thought it it'd be interesting, yeah, to have a kind of a comment review process where someone would propose something, the community would review it, and then the other side, other side would see it. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think those are all things that we could experiment with in the sense doing. And it also makes me think that one problem with the sense doing group as it is right now is that and I've found in a lot of the groups is that it, it's helpful if you have an honest 
uh, a believer on the other side of the debate. And so we have even less of that now in the community than we did right. before. So yeah, also part of the process might be going out and finding some people that are, that disagree and but are willing to put in the extra effort to experiment with these tools and practices. Mm -hmm. Or we could like uh, risk a system and like look for the things we don't agree on. Which I'm sure that must exist. We have very high dimension. Yeah, that was, that was I, there, so interesting. Yeah. yeah, there will be there will be disagreements in in any community. Yeah, um, and one of the disagreements also could be is how do we respond to someone who exactly. doesn't believe that vaccines are? I have. I, idea. I wouldn't think we'd have a disagreement there, but <laughs> I have. I have. I have a strange idea, which is why don't we get somebody who's really good at uh, prompt engineering? to use chat GPT to represent Steve Bannon or some well-known anti-vaxxer or whatever else in an argument. And, and we'll just, we'll just start it by saying, Hey, you are, you are this person. Why, why, why do you not, not like vaccines? I think that's worth trying. I did try on one of my debates to use chat BT, chat P GPT. GPT and it was substantially one-sided. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if I just wasn't good at making up the prompts, but it, I think they've put some things in the system to weed out non the extreme responses or something. Yeah, or... but it's worth a try. Yeah. Um, and Christopher Allen has been posting on a different list. I'm on um, some ways in which he's using ChatGPT that are shockingly clear and good. Like he's sort of, <clears throat> he describes how he's got three different chat windows open. This one he uses for this, this one for this, and, blah, blah, and then he does this, and then blah, blah. And, and it's clear to me that understanding how ChatGPT works and coaching it through very carefully is incredibly important to getting mm -hmm. substantively useful um, replies out. <clears throat> and, I, and I am nowhere on that spectrum. I have no, you know, all I can do is retell stories, that's all. <clears throat> um, and uh, and Jerry, actually, I was listening to one of your recent podcasts. I think I'm on episode three. Oh, cool! Um, and I was it was a there was sort of a a disagreement, although it's probably just phrasing that it'd be interesting to get into at some point about.